A buddy of mine were flying FPV yesterday and he took a pretty big spill. He had a Beta 75 and uh, as the it does this does not have the OSD. This is just the uh, normal uh, camera that Beta FPV sells. And uh, after he crashed, he stopped getting signal from the camera. So I said, hey man, let me have it for the afternoon and I'll try to fix it the next day. And so I'm poking around. I've discovered a couple interesting things. Um, if you'll see here, there's three big solder pads and there are three similar uh, large or uh, size solder pads on the actual video transmitter board just below it. And they were all soldered together. So there's there three big solder blobs connecting the camera itself to the board. Now, when we were trying to bend the camera back, those snapped and I was like, okay, let's just stop fiddling with this. Let's get it back to the bench and then we'll take a closer look. So I thought that these three were doing like the uh, ground five volts and video signal here and that the header pin on the back side was there just to keep it in place. I didn't know what was going on. So I took my voltmeter and I checked continuity and uh, these three pads are all ground. So uh, they're just there, I think, to help uh, more securely hold the camera in place. And they're just there as solder pads to um, give it a little bit more uh, strength than just having these header pins try to hold the camera in position. So that being said, we don't have to really worry about uh, these pads on the front side as far as uh, repairing anything. Uh, we just need to get these uh, three little pins here uh, sorted and uh, figure out what's going on to that's stopping the camera from transmitting. So um, one thing I did notice is uh, the pin on the back side is loose. So I think the pin itself actually broke. So I'm gonna try to extract this and hopefully not just destroy everything. So bear with me and I'm going to try to kind of troubleshoot this on the fly and get it all sorted. So I can see whenever I heat up the solder, the pin itself is wobbling, but then by the time I move the solder tip and get the tweezers in, it's already hardened back up. So I'm going to have to grab it and heat it up at the same time. Again, using ceramic solder tip or ceramic tweezers makes this possible. There we go. Okay. So you can see I just removed a portion of the pin that should be going through this board and down to the next one that shouldn't be broken so that's probably a big part of the problem um, these other two pins let's heat them up and see if they wobble I think they're probably okay yep that one's good And I'm having a hard time getting to this middle one. Okay, yeah. The middle one and uh, the one on the right side are solid. So it's just the one on the left that broke. So hopefully that's where our problem lies. I'm going to spin this around real quick. And um, you can see on the board, it has everything labeled all nice. Uh, the very uh, one on the right side says 5V, so that's 5 volts. The middle one is uh, GD, ground. And then the one on the leftmost side is VID or the video signal. So the video signal is the pin that got busted. Now if you look carefully you can still see the pin goes to the board. So I'm going to try and just uh, put a little bit of a solder blob on the back side and see if that connects it the rest of the way. Um, I don't want to have to depin this. That's kind of a bear. If I can just um, add a little bit of solder and get the connection uh, back on this back side, then that would be a much easier solution. So let's give that a shot. So I put a little bit of flux on there and that will help the solder flow and not bridge. And I'm just gonna heat up that one pin where the video signal is going. All right, good deal. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of solder to all the pins because I noticed the pin in the middle, the ground, doesn't really seem to have a solder blob on the back side. So we're just gonna Fix that and then the 5 volt will do the same thing we'll just add a little bit of solder to reinforce that 
connection. All right, so you should see a big difference. There's a lot more solder connecting the pads on the back side of the camera board to the pins themselves. Uh, hopefully that fixed it. I'm gonna take a close look with my eyes closed to make sure nothing's bridged. That all looks pretty good. Okay, so we're gonna spin this back around. I'm gonna grab my LCD so we can see if the, uh, when I plug it in, if we're getting video signal. Let's give this a shot. So, actually, before I do that, I want to check continuity. That's just something that is a smart thing to do so you don't make a silly mistake and burn out something. So, basically what I've done, here I'm going to move all this. I've just set up my multimeter so that it, there's a setting uh, where you can check continuity. That basically means if there's a short, it beeps. It lets you know. And you can use that and connect to... The I'm going to move this over there because there's nothing on the display you really need to see. It just makes a noise. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to grab the battery terminal. And I'm going to go to the positive and negative side. And it should be an open circuit. But if it beeps, that means I have a, a short somewhere. And um, I need to look more closely at the solder joints to see where I bridged it. It's just a really simple sanity check. All right, so I'm touching both there. No beeping. That means that I don't have any bridges. So that's always just a good thing to check before you plug in and accidentally, you know, burn out a component. All right, so we're gonna plug this in. Sorry about that. I think uh, my internet just had a little bit of a hiccup. But yeah, so basically I was just plugging in and then once I got to the right channel, you can see that the video transmitter is working perfectly. So. We just saved this uh, camera, and that's an exciting thing, which is great. Uh, now, one thing that we are going to take a look at is uh, we're going to try and make sure that we uh, repair not just the functionality of the camera, but also those big three tabs in the front. If we take a look at those, let me just spin this. Well, the way it's soldered up, I'm actually not going to worry about it because... Uh, I'm going to have to desolder the pins to move it all back, and I don't want to bend that anymore. So um, you don't need those three pads to get it to work. They are just there to stiffen it. So I, I take back what I just said. I'm going to leave those be um, for this video. I might try to do that later on by myself. But you all get the idea. If you, take a, if you have a bad crash and your video camera stops working, you might just want to resolder and take a look at these pins here and make sure that you're getting the 5 volts uh, in and your video out to your video transmitter and you might just save yourself some money. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.